I'm Vanessa, and this is a photo of me hugging a giant sloth. For generations, we humans have been trying to fly. We've taken inspiration from nature, tried to recreate it, and we've failed. Spectacularly. The earliest experiments were basically bird costumes like this one. And the results, well, you can probably tell, they were both awful and hilarious. But putting powered flight aside, is there some way that we can fly with our puny human strength? Or at least power our own flight? And how big would our wings need to be? It's a dumb question. Well, you may be thinking that it's a dumb question, but there's actually lots of science that you can find out along the way. It's an interesting thought experiment, and I don't want to have to discover it all by myself. <laughs> First up, let's look at how birds fly. Bird wings, as well as insect wings or flying fox wings, are aerofoils. This means if you look at a cross section of the wing, it's splitting air above and below it as the creature moves forward. And this teardrop shape means air molecules move slightly differently above and below the wing. The molecules have to travel a longer distance over the top, and so they get spread out, leading to lower air pressure above the wing, while the air pressure remains at a relative higher pressure below the wing. That difference in pressure creates lift. This is based on something called Bernoulli's principle, which states that a speed difference must be accompanied by a pressure difference. Planes use similar aerofoil designs to generate lift. You can see this pretty simply just with a sheet of paper. If you hold it up and blow over the top, the paper will lift up. That's because the air below the paper is unchanged, but blowing over the top disrupts the air molecules and creates this difference in pressure. Also, it's a great on-the-fly party trick. It's a boring party. Hey. In addition to the aerofoil wing shape, birds have a few other advantages to help them generate thrust and lift, like hollow bones, small skeletons, and air sacs connected to their lungs to make them lighter. But what about this big human skeleton? No matter how impressive your pecs are, or how rapidly you can flap, we just aren't designed to fly like an eagle. In fact, a physicist from Louisiana tried to work out how long a human's wings would need to be to get into the sky, based on the wingspan and weight of flying birds. And using a very rough calculation, he came to a figure of around 6.7 metres. Which, if you draw onto a human, looks ridiculous. Can you imagine dragging around 7 metres of wing behind you? Plus, our physicist friend also says that this calculation doesn't take into account the weight of the wings themselves. So to actually take off, they need to be even longer. And we'd need even bigger muscles to power them, meaning the wings would need to be longer still. We just don't have the power or wingspan proportionate to our size and weight to flap our arms and soar off into the sky. Now, putting biological wings aside, people have been dreaming up all sorts of tech for human-powered flight since the 1920s. The idea was to find a way of flying without an engine, just using our own strength and ingenuity. Mainly our ingenuity. Many of the first designs were towed up into the air. They had minimal control, and flying for more than a kilometre proved pretty tricky. Then in 1959, the Kremer Prize was launched, offering cash prizes to the first human-powered aircraft to fly a figure of eight course around two markers half a mile apart. And by 1977, a craft called the Gossamer Condor II, designed by an amateur cyclist and hang glider pilot, Dr. Paul McCready, completed the course. Since then, craft like these have actually become pretty sophisticated. 
and they've travelled long distances. In the 80s, MIT started breaking records with their human-powered craft, and they've set the current distance record, a little over 115 kilometres. And if that tech keeps improving, maybe one day it'll be pretty normal to fly through the sky, kind of like birds do. I have high hopes. It looks really evil if you look at its face, it's like not gonna steal a chip, it's gonna kill you. <laughs>